Hello, today we are going to go over how to enter your payroll into LCP Tracker. You know, I often get asked about who has to be reported on certified payroll. The answer is that anyone who is working in a manual labor job must be reported on certified payroll. So any classification on the wage decision must be reported. Anyone working in a manual capacity that is not on the wage decision must be reported. And anyone who is a supervisor but spends more than 20% of their time working in the manual classification must be reported. That being said, let's start by logging into LCP Tracker. You will find LCP Tracker on the web at lcptracker.net. You can use the following browsers, Mozilla, Google, Microsoft Edge, and Opera. Once again, you will find LCP Tracker at lcptracker.net. There are five methods of payroll entry available that you can use to add employees to the system. We are going to review the manual way of entering people and for more information, you can visit the training materials and the quick start guide to add information. Once you have logged into LCP Tracker, you will need to set up your payroll account. Begin by clicking on the setup tab. There are three different items you will need to complete in the Setup tab. Add employees, set up e-signature, and set up additional users. We will go through each item during the tutorial. The first thing you'll do is add your employees into the system. This is where you enter the information about the employees, such as the name, address, and other information you'll need for each employee's payroll. The last four digits of the social security number is only required. An example of the format you will use will be XXX-XX-1234 or whatever the last four digits of the employee's social will be. You will repeat this information for all of the employees that you will need to add. Once you've added all your employees, the next thing you'll want to do is create your e-signature password. This password is equal to your legal written signature and will be required when you upload an e-document or certifying your payroll. The third thing you'll need to do is set up any additional users within your company that will need access to the account without having to give them your login credentials. It's very important to never share your password with anyone. You can add as many users to the system without having to share your password. Sharing passwords opens up potential problems when several people are working on payrolls. They will have their own user ID, login password, and e-signature password. Once you have set up the items in the Setup tab, you're ready to load your required documents into the eDocuments tab. The eDocuments tab is an electronic file folder used to store any documents that are needed for your payroll. Examples of documents that you store will be child support garnishments, tax liens, apprenticeship supporting documents, and so on. Click on the eDocuments tab, then click on Download Document Templates. This is a list of the templates available for download. A required document all contractors need to upload will be the Contractor Fringe Benefit Statement, available from the, the templates. It will be downloadable as a fillable Word document. Complete the Contractor Fringe Benefit Statement and save it to your computer. Navigate to eDocuments and click on Upload Documents. Select the project information, dates, and description of the form being uploaded. Select this, the file you save the form from with your computer. Enter eSignature password and click on Save. Your document was successfully saved. Once you've uploaded your required documents, you're ready to start entering your payroll records. Click on the Payroll Records tab, then click on Enter Records. You will enter the records for the employees that worked on the project that week. If you need assistance to enter your weekly payroll, please refer to the Quick Start Guide for entering payroll on the CDOT website Enter payroll in LCP Tracker for more detailed steps to get your payroll submitted. Once you've entered your work records for the week, you will need to check for notices. Click on the Notice tab. 
You'll want to make sure you don't have any payroll notices. Otherwise, you cannot certify your payroll records until the notices have been cleared. Payroll notices would be discrepancies on the payroll records, such as not meeting the prevailing wage or something missing from your e-documents, such as the contractor fringe benefit statement. Once you clear the payroll notices, you will be able to certify your payroll records. In another tutorial, we will cover how to certify your payroll records. Thank you.